So today, unfortunately, we have to do another video on Jake Paul, so I apologize for that. Earlier, he uploaded footage of him pulling up on Dylan Dennis and throwing water balloons at him. You can literally hear Jake telling the driver to dip when Dennis gets close to the truck. Hey, look, it's Conor McGregor's bitch right there. Pussy. 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 Dip, dip, dip. Pussy. You bitch. Dana White also responded to Jake's call out to Conor McGregor in an interview with TMZ. All Dana said was, I'm thinking of letting Amanda Nunes knock his ass out. Daniel Cormier and Aria Helwani discussed the draw between Davis and Figueredo and Brandon Moreno at UFC 256, as well as Figueredo getting a point deducted during the fight. It was so weird. Very rarely am I buzzing the day after the fight. I couldn't come off the high. I could not come down on Sunday. I was like so excited. Like I kept talking to people about what we witnessed because it felt so like different, especially at 125. And it sounded like there were hundreds of people in there, bro. It was so loud. You can hear them through the cans. You can hear the coaches yelling. You can hear the people in the background, the oohs and the ahs. It was insane to watch these two men go to war as they did. It was it was it was it was great man it was so fun davis and figueredo brandon moreno both guys walk out of there with their head held high nobody lost and i know this sounds like a theme that's growing as we go forward we're always like you know nobody really lost in that fight but the reality is no one lost on saturday night davis and figueredo won the fight the one point deduction obviously right. made it a, a draw but he won the fight. Right? Now, are so, you saying that based on what the scorecard said, or based, based on, on what you the think? Scorecard say. What do you I, think? I, honestly, I thought I thought Brandon Moreno won the fight. Yes. When you have a, a team or an athlete that is a massive underdog, and they're in the fight with a, a champion like that, they become the story. When I'm speaking to Moreno in that point, see, I thought he won two, three, and four. That's why I thought he won the fight. If I'm speaking to Moreno in two, three, and four, all of those rounds were extremely close. And as they went into round five, obviously it was two to two. But in round five, I spoke to how Brandon Moreno took his foot off the gas and Davison Figueredo, if this fight was on the table, he went and took it from him. So uh, no knock on the champ. I, I just... The guy, the guy that's the challenger and the underdog in a lot of situations become the store. When you went second and fourth for, for Moreno, right? Yeah. This is where we found ourselves in that bit of a spot. Because you're in the third round, you get the low blow. This is such a swing round. Yeah. It can go 9-9, nine, nine, but Davison cannot win this round anymore. All he can do is tie. Moreno landed a big overhand right at the end of the third round. And it was a very competitive round. He landed a combination as the round ended. And I was like, oh my goodness. Once Moreno got up from the, the, the low kick, he won that portion of that round. Then he won four. He could win three rounds, you know, without winning another one. So um, I kind of had him winning the fight. If you haven't heard yet, Leon Edwards versus Hamza Chemaev has been rescheduled for January 20th. The initial fight was canceled because Leon tested positive for COVID-19. Hamza Chemaev is coming off a first round KO win over Gerald Marshart. Leon Edwards is coming off a unanimous decision win over Rafael Dos Anjos. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson previews his upcoming fight with Jeff Neal this weekend. He also discusses preparing for the fight with Chris Weidman. He told him a made junkie at some point I think he's going to use his wrestling. He's going to use his strength against me. Maybe get me up against the cage, use the cage to try to take me down, or to use his dirty boxing. So I got great guys to help me prepare for this fight. Wherever the fight goes, I'm going to be ready. On Chris Weidman, he went on to say to have him in my corner who's just a massive 185er to begin with and such a high level wrestler. It's just amazing to have him really right up the street. He lives in South Carolina and now right up the road, so I get him whenever I want him now. So it's great to be able to have him wrestle me and me trying to get back up. In sparring, going from striking to wrestling with him, it's just extra confidence because that could be how the fight goes with Jeff Neal. I know he's looking for that. I know he's looking for a takedown at some point, so like I said, it's great to have him out here and I'm ready wherever the fight goes. Michael Bisping released behind the scenes footage of the end of the year wrap up show to his Instagram. What's going on, Gio? <laughs> Is, is DC being a diva? DC, you, you've changed, bro. You've changed. What's going on? He's complaining his coffee's not hot enough. And he's calling you big time. Oh my god. You are not the diva today. Yes, what do you mean today? 
Alexander Volkanovsky celebrated a year since his first fight with Max Holloway. He posted this to his Instagram saying, warming up for the biggest fight of my life, this time exactly a year ago. Max Holloway speaks on Habib Nurmagomedov's retirement. Man, I, man, man, um, it's not completely out the water. He said that if he get his mom's blessing, that he'd come back. So come back, Khabib, please. I wanna, I wanna step in the octagon with you one time, man. But you know, uh, you know, all, all competitiveness aside, the dude's a freaking legend, bro. He, he's a goat. Uh, I, he's one of the best to ever do this. Um, you know, tough times with, 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 with everything going on with his family and stuff, you know, uh, prayers to him. I hope he's doing safe, but I see him killing it. You know, he just had the interview. He's just, he's, the dude is launching his own cellular line you know, out there. The dude is launching his own MMA provision, uh, a promotion. You are a beast, Khabib, and uh, nothing but happy for you, bro. But if you ever, uh, if you ever want to come back for real, let me know, bro. Hit my line. I would, I would love the opportunity to share the octagon with you. The guy is just, I'm a competitor and he's one of the best. That's, that's the kind of competition that, uh, that excites me. So. I, I hope nothing but the best for him. I hope he, he he's helping rush out so much, man. He's killing it. He's killing it. He's getting the next generation too. So he's ready. So it, 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 good times, bro. Just all the blessings to him. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post future ones. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one says Tony's the type of guy to become double jointed whenever needed. The second one says as much as I want Hamzat hype to be real. Wonderboy speaking straight facts. UFC disrespecting the rest of the division and Leon especially by giving him this fight. And the final one says Mark Hunt is forever a legend. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured on the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. Also, be sure to check out the other types of MMA content we post on this channel. Click either of these two videos on the screen right now.